you may have heard the phrase before, your treasure is in heaven. Well, really, that comes from Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount where he talks about storing up treasure in heaven in Matthew chapter 6. And as a part of our series of videos on the Sermon on the Mount, we're going to dive into that little section of his sermon today and learn what it looks like to store up for ourselves treasure in heaven, which are eternal. Let's dive into the scripture, chapter 6, verse 19. Jesus says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moss and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasure in heaven where moss and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break and steal. Jesus basically is communicating, look. He says, store up for yourself treasure in heaven where it's eternal, where it's lasting. Don't store up for yourselves treasure here on earth. I like how Solomon would say it in Ecclesiastes. You, you, if you've read it, he would say vanity. It, it's all vanity. And you go, what does that mean? Vanishing. It's all vanishing. It's there in one moment. It's gone in the next. Solomon would talk about what does it matter? What does it matter that I work my whole life and accomplish all this stuff when I just have to leave it to someone else and who even knows what he's going to do with it? Solomon, the wisest man in the world, I believe, was really speaking prophetically because he knew his son Rehoboam. I'm going to be honest, he was an idiot. And he knew he was going to leave all of his wealth, all of his money to a prideful young man who would ruin it all. And within... A small amount of time, Rehoboam divided all of Israel and 10 of the 12 tribes left him. And he said, vanishing, vanity. It's just, it's just stuff. And Paul would write in the New Testament, he would say, I believe it was in 1 Timothy, he would say, where well, you came into this world with nothing and it's certain that you'll go out of this world with nothing. There's nothing in this world that we take with us. It's where the world we sang comes from. You can't take it with you. We can't take anything with us when we die. But Jesus says, rather, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Why? Because you can take that with you. It's waiting for you. And he talks to us about the importance of not focusing on earthly treasure, but focusing on heavenly treasure, investing in our eternity. He says something powerful in verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It was a powerful statement that Jesus would make. Whenever you put your money in something, you instinctively care about it. And I want to give you this example. First, I'm going to talk about um, the tithes and the offerings, and then I want to tie it into an example I'm going to give you, and I believe it's really going to speak to you. A lot of pastors will use this scripture when they talk about the tithes and the offerings in the church. They'll say, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus made this statement because he realized whenever you put your money somewhere, you want it to be successful. So the reason I believe that God asks us for our tithe and for our offerings is because he knows that if we give our treasure to it, our heart will go with it. Let me give you a natural example our retirement accounts, our 401ks. My 401k, I put money in it, and every year I have to talk to my stock advisor, and we make a decision on where we want to invest. Now, you'd be amazed how much you care when you invest in something. One year, I decided I didn't trust the stocks in the stock market that year. I felt like we were going to have a recession, and I moved all of my investments into gold miners in certain funds that really would benefit if the stock market went down. And so normally, I couldn't care less how those funds do, but all of a sudden, when I put my treasure into it, I was praying, God, I'm believing that the gold miners are going to go up. God, I'm believing that the stock market's going to go down. I am praying for something to do well. Why? Because my treasure was there. My heart was with it also. And it's the same principle. God's saying where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And if you're storing up treasure in heaven, if you're, your heart will be there also. And it's so important that we capture, catch, and apply that principle for our life. Jesus said in verse 22, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? This seems really out of place. These, these two verses, when you read them as you're reading, it can come off like, what is he saying? Like, like what, what kind of subject changes this, Jesus? Like, why would you go this route? 
And what he's doing is he's setting up the next statement, which is so powerful. And I want to explain to you how he's setting it up. He's saying, look, he goes, your body, your, your, your eye is the lamp of the body. And you have a choice. You can be healthy and you can focus on the light. Or you can be unhealthy and you can focus on the darkness. But either way, you'll be full of one of them. You will either be full of light or you will be full of darkness. You can't have both. He says that to set up a powerful scripture that you've probably heard in verse 24. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be committed to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You can't serve both. You can't serve the creator and the created. You have to serve one or the other. First Timothy 6 verse 10, it's a hard scripture to hear, but I want to share it with you today because I believe that it'll speak to many of us. I'm going to quote the King James Version, the original translation in the Greek to the uh, English language. For the love of money is the root. It's the root, like thinking of the example of trees and a fruit. It's the root of all evil. For many have coveted after it and have erred from the faith. They've moved away from the faith and they've pierced themselves with many sorrows. Is money evil? No. But the love of money is. The love of money more than the love of God is evil. The love of the created more than the creator is evil. And what I don't want us to do is find us in a situation where we covet after the creation more than we love the creator, where we find ourselves running away from the things of God and running after the things of this world and as a result, pierce ourselves with many sorrows. You say, what does that mean? Look at how many families have been torn apart because of money. Look at how many families have been torn apart because of money. Marriages that have been torn apart because of money. Kids that have been affected because of money. Just relationships and friendships and bonds and and God moments that have just been robbed because of a love of money. Money, what is money? The power to possess. The love of the power to possess. The power to possess what? Things that God has not called us to possess. We can't love money more than we love God. Money is a tool. And used wisely, Great things can be done. But if you have a wrong heart and a wrong perspective of money, it will lead to pain, so much pain in your life. Hear my heart. Love God, not money. You can't love both. Choose God. Be blessed today.